quite a few people have asked around the availability of the tools and are they free for use? So if you want to speak to that item, that would be great. Irma? <laughs> well, um, it, that really depends. So um, things like uh, illicit and consensus usually have freemium models um, like ChatGPT does. So you can use it some things uh, for free uh, and others uh, not. Um, I think Research Rabbit is entirely free. Um, so is um, the Semantic Scholar Research Feed. Um, and as for the trained um, AI model that uh, was used in the study by Adam et al, that is, well, the training data is available. The model itself, as far as I know, is not. So, well, the, well, the model is available. It's, it's open source. It's Mistral some version. And uh, the training data is available, but you would need to do your own training to use it in the way they did. Great, thank you very much. We had a few questions that are kind of grouping together around um, sort of vocabulary used and things like that and the terminology. So I'll just read those out as a, as a batch really, and then you can sort of pick out what you think might be answerable. So we had one that was around, what's the difference between an AI assisting tool and an LL model? And are they essentially the same? We had another question that just asked about, could you just define um, what recall means in this context? And uh, just a general comment that there are a lot of sort of technical terms around this space. Do you have anything that you would or could recommend as a kind of starting point in getting to grips with some of the terminology uh, used in this in this space? So there was one about the difference between an AI assisting tool and a large language model. Are they the same? And if you could just sort of quickly define what you mean by recall as well. Yeah, so I'm happy to start with the recall question. So generally recall is defined as the number of relevant references that are identified by a search strategy um, from all the entire relevant references that are within an information system or with a source. So that's the definition of recall. Uh, some of you might also know that it's called sensitivity. So these terms can be used, um, yeah, both of them signify the same. Um, with regard to what are LLM or AI supported tools, whether LLMs themselves. So Irma mentioned several tools, illicit consensus, that um, are basically search engines, or should I put it the other way around? They are LLMs enhanced by search engines. That means they have access to a database, to the Semantic Scholar database, um, and thus are not only producing text or predicting words, but actually have access to a database with references. And that would be the main difference between a uh, um, search engine enhanced LLM model rather than a LLM model on its own, like ChatGPT, which uh, as far as I know, does not have a connection to a database. Irma, is there anything you want to add to that? Um, let me think. Um, so yeah, and and uh, in the uh, in the terminology, I think I used AI and LLM more or less um, uh, equally. But um, as as Maria Inti showed in the in the start, there are different types of artificial intelligence systems and. Most of the studies and, and, and approaches I looked at use LLMs, but they don't necessarily only use them. So, for example, um, using training data to, to then refine an LLM is maybe something a bit different than just using an LLM. But, um, yeah. That's great. Thank you. And I'm also, I, I would like to quickly, because there was a question on which uh, um, study or which uh, publication could help with the terminology. Yeah. So I would like to share quickly my screen again. So this is a um, very nice article 
article by Laura Warner, Defining AI, a lexicon for librarians and their patrons, which we've also used to, um, yeah, define the terminology um, for our talk. And it's uh, written in a very, 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 uh, very easy and understandable way. So this uh, would be my recommendation. And I'm happy to put down the uh, reference in the chat in a few seconds. That looks really useful. Thank you. Um, another question then we had quite early on, which was in the case of Elicit, you mentioned the problem of AI retrieving relevant results. Have you observed the same issue with tools that support search development, such as PubReminer? And do you have any advice for best use of these tools? Ah, okay. So uh, PubReminer is basically a text analysis tool. So um, if you have like it, it really depends on what you feed it with. <clears throat> so my use of PubReminer would be I only feed it with references that are relevant to me, and then it gives me search terms that are hopefully relevant to me. Of course, um, it works on uh, on a word frequency basis, so frequent words are not necessarily always um relevant words for my search, <clears throat> which is why some tools, and I want to point out the, well, how is it called? Search Builder, right? The quick tool. Um, yeah. This is also a text analysis tool. It's also free, but it compares your relevant reference output with a set of uh, random PubMed um, references, and then also creates a score that indicates how um, if if a term is overrepresented in your set compared to all of PubMed, which gives you a better idea of whether this term would be relevant for your search. I hope this um, answered the question in any way, shape or form. Thank you very much. The next one that I wanted to ask was around, um, is there already a guideline to state how the use of AI and systematic literature searching should be done? And yeah. As far as I know, there is no guideline available yet. Um, there are so many studies coming out. Um, so the scoping review we used in our um, talk uh, that was published as a preprint recently. The search was conducted in February 2024. So there is always this um, gap between monitoring the current literature, evaluating it. Um, and as far as I know, there's no established guideline yet. And I think the only thing it, that prompts me to say is that that Prisma 2020 has a sort of allowance for making sure that you do report if you've used any automation tool in your in the conduct of your systematic rev review. So this, so that is applicable here. Um, but then as we've heard about today, obviously the sort of generative AI and LLMs present new challenges for us. There will need to be new guidance on how best to use those um, tools and how best to report them. And in a later webinar in this series, there will be um, an update on a cross-organizational initiative, which is called RAISE, which is all about responsible use of AI in evidence synthesis. So I just wanted to flag that. Thanks, Anna. Let me go down to the next question. I'm going to just go to one that touched on the environmental impact um, and how you sort of, how were we going to be able to kind of balance the fact that yes, perhaps these tools can bring enormous efficiency in some ways, but if not the uh, appropriate level of accuracy, where does where do we sort of sit with making, you know, making sure that it's, um, ethically sound to use these tools if they don't actually deliver on the accuracy that we need, um, given the potential environmental impact themselves on using the tools. 
Sorry, that's a very badly worded. I'm trying to find the exact wording because they did much better than me. No, I think I, I got a grasp of what the question is asking about. So basically, it's very it's very difficult um, to answer this, but I like would say or suggest that if there are solutions that are working well, for example, looking up substances in a in an authoritative database like PubChem from from PubMed or from the NLM. Um, rather than asking ChatGPT to produce a, a list with substances pertaining to the GLP-1 class, you know, it's much more efficient, also energy-wise, to go to an established database source and search there rather than use an LLM to ask about a list of substances that you will need to check again anyways, um, because it might have come up with a substance that, that doesn't even exist. So um, maybe to, to guide us a bit along that way, if there are tools already that are outperforming or are, are very well suited for what we are trying to do regarding all the specific broken down tasks that pertain to a search, I would rather go down that route and reserve the LLMs for what they've been doing best, which is really summarizing text, producing text, helping with the writing of the search methods. Um, this is what I would suggest for now. Irma, uh, any thoughts from your side on that? Because it is also an important ethical question and also maybe a question on personal preferences. No, uh, I agree. If there are already tools that do something efficiently and in a way that is reproducible and robust, uh, then I don't think doing it with AI because AI may be able to do it is, uh, is a useful approach. All right, thank you. We are now into the final five minutes, so I'm going to limit it now just to two questions left. Um, what, one is that, and we had quite a number of questions on this same theme, so hopefully this is articulating a number of different questions. So the challenge with evaluating AI is that the development is so rapid that we don't ever seem to have a stable baseline. Are there plans for living reviews of evaluations of AI tools? Do you know of? Well, I for sure know uh, of one planned project. Uh, maybe some of you have heard of um, the Destiny project um, that has been funded by the Wellcome uh, Trust, um, which is specifically um, uh, designed to develop and evaluate um, digital evidence synthesis tools for um, systematic review tasks or evidence synthesis more generally. And I'm very much looking forward to what this um, project is going to deliver. Fantastic, thank you. And, um, and then I think our final question, um, is there some evidence for the use of AI in looking for knowledge gaps. Is that another use case that? Hmm. <clears throat> so I'm not sure if I've come across evidence yet. Um, the paper that Maria Inti mentioned at the very end about interdisciplinary uh, research was very interesting in that regard on a theoretical basis because they they pointed out that sometimes the knowledge gaps come down to terminology and that would be something where AI could be really helpful to, to understand the connections that maybe the, 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 the human researchers in their disciplines do not make. 